So you're 60 this week. Do you feel 60? Uh, it, uh, well, it was interesting. Now, the girls had got me some new trainers, uh, which was very nice uh, and a big surprise. So I went out for a run in them and I, I think my caption was afterwards, uh, uh, great new trainers, same old body. <laughs> <laughs> so there's times where I get <laughs> pretty tired. Uh, I'm uh, both and works, you know, pretty full on. You think, well, in some countries, the average life expectancy of people is below sixty, yeah. uh, and I'm still still got. Yeah, still got my faculties. I'm still got. I can still, still go. You know, I'm still fit. I can do stuff. So, I want to use the best that I have. You know, that's not saying, you know, run seventy this week, and I've got another good friend who's seventy, and they've got tons of energy. You know, so it's not sort of saying you reach your sixty and you think oh, it's downhill now till I retire, and then I might as well just. Uh, you know, go to a villa on the Costa del Sol and, you know, uh, but it is trying to make the most of what you've got. So that's yeah. it, really. So this, this thing you're doing this year in your 60th year. 61st. In your 61st? Sorry, yeah. yes. Yes, get it right. Yes. In this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you've had 60. Yes. I've had 60. <laughs> um, what's it, what inspired it? Where did it come from? Do you know, I haven't a clue. Uh, it just sort of popped up that I can do something. Why don't I do something? And and I was, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, I, I normally, I think it was partly motivated by the Great North Run, the fact I couldn't do it. Then I thought maybe I can do over the next year 60 things. And then it turned into 60 at 60, hashtag, you know, type of line. And then I, I thought, well, maybe I should try and blog a bit about it. And then I thought, well, what on earth is a blog? <laughs> How do you do one? So I have set up a, a website and a blog page, and I've, I've started doing that. And I've got a few a few ideas, you know, which is going to be a mix of sort of things I haven't done or haven't tried, you know, some nice things like I've never been to the West End to a theatre or anything. So do something like that, a mix of stuff like how many places can I visit in 60 minutes by different means. My daughter wants me to swim off East Beach, so I suppose I'm going to have to do that. I have to do it within those green poles, don't I? Right. Yeah. You're supposed yeah. to do it. Uh, that will be something like 60 strokes. <laughs> <You're lucky. laughs> What's yeah. the biggest thing you're doing? The biggest thing is the Pilgrim's Way from uh, walking from Winchester Cathedral to Canterbury Cathedral, which is 135 miles. Yeah. The plan is to do that in two stages. Um, just bas basically because partly because of holidays and partly uh, because I think it gives something of interest next year so I'm, I'm busy booking stopping points um, starting on the 29th of August so I'm doing it as far as Oxford and Kent come next spring I'll do from Oxford to uh, to Canterbury. Good. So that will be the Kent leg. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest thing, and it's a sort of like a spiritual exercise. So literally a pilgrimage. It's a chance to see parts of the country I've never been to, uh, but it's also a walking, a literally seeing us walking alongside those who were persecuted, yeah. and. Uh, walking in their steps so it's 
walking in people's spiritual previous generation spiritual footsteps but walking alongside those who are doing hard journeys now good and you're raising um money for open doors um as i yeah. said we started recording well I'll, I'll get you back to talk about open doors in a few weeks but tell us give us 30 seconds to a minute of what of what open doors is about that's a big challenge isn't it 60 seconds 60 seconds on on open doors uh, okay, Open Doors, uh, set up 1955 by a Dutchman called uh, Andrew Van Ziel, who went to Poland and saw a need for Bibles and supporting brothers and sisters in difficult places. Since then, uh, it's now in 55 countries over the world, and the aim is to support Christians who are suffering in whatever way is appropriate. So that's Christian literature. It can be trauma counseling. It can be bringing in emergency aid to people. Uh, it can be legal aid. It's helping them to know biblically how to respond to persecution. And it's advocating for persecuted Christians to key decision makers. So those would be some of the, the main things. Good, great, great. It's been good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Duncan. And um, yeah, and we look forward to uh, seeing pictures of you on the on the Pilgrim's Way beginning in beginning in August. Um, yes, you, yeah, you can all go on to my blog site or my website and have a look. <laughs>